Now, when we talk about this issue of loss, there's one thing that we want to bring up, and that is the fact that we shouldn't see that it's only talking about loss in the hereafter. That is the greatest of losses, but it's even loss in this life. Even loss in this life. And regardless of who or what status the person is in, every single person is in loss. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-insan fi... But in other surahs, insan fi kabad. Kabad. The insan is always working hard, always struggling and striving and going from difficulty to difficulty to difficulty. So sometimes we may see some people and say, but look at this person, they don't seem to be going through difficulty. They're rich, they're fine, they're, you know, having luxurious, nice life and so on. SubhanAllah, if you look closely, you will find maybe the farmer who's working so hard and very poor and barely has enough to eat, but at night he can sleep comfortably. And the one who has millions, he cannot even sleep at night. He's suffering in his own way. By the end, he will commit suicide. By the end, he will use drugs and alcohol to try to cover his pain. By the end, you will find that he is doing all kinds of strange things to his body or to the way he lives because he cannot even find a bit of peace. He has to take all kinds of sleep medicine or use antidepressants, and he himself is in great loss as well. So when you look at those examples, Brother Nu'man Ali Khan, he mentions, you know, what is the greatest fruit of Iman? It's tranquility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَا إِنَّ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ this kind of sakina, this kind of peace and tranquility, calmness. This is what the believer will get as one of the greatest fruits of Iman in this life. In this life. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Isn't the affair of the believer so amazing and strange? When something good happens to him, he's grateful and it's better for him. And when something difficult or bad would happen to him, he's patient and it will be better for him. And the Prophet ﷺ said, that's not for anyone except for the mu'min. It's not for anyone except for the believer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us that actually to succeed and get out of loss in this life and in the hereafter, the person has to have these four criteria. Because what is it that everybody is striving for? When you tell somebody, why are you going to school? They say to get a degree. Then you say, why are you going to get the degree? So I can get a good job. Why do you want to get a good job? So I can make money. Why do you want to make money? So I can buy a nice house. Why do you want to buy a nice house? So I can be happy. By the end, this is what it is. You're running, 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 one after the other. What is it? I want to be successful. I want to be happy. I want to just feel comfortable, actually. This is what it is. So you may get the worldly things. In the end, you didn't get the happiness and the true success and peace that you're running after day and night, day and night, day and night. The Prophet ﷺ said the believer has it by virtue of being a believer. Brother Nu'man Ali Khan, he gives an example. We can all think of examples in our life or people we know. He said that in Hurricane Katrina, you know the hurricane that hit Louisiana in America. So it came and it destroyed many areas. He said there was a Muslim family living there and they were selling luxury cars. They were selling luxury cars. So they said, we are Muslim, we don't want to deal with riba. So they bought the cars cash. Mercedes and all these kind of very nice cars. And they were doing very well, mashallah. And they were living a good life, financially. Very well off. The hurricane came, destroyed all of the cars. Except for the car they drove away in to escape. One car. So they drove away with that car. Brother Nu'man Ali Khan says, we came to visit after to see how everyone's doing. and We met with them. And we found the brother is smiling and so happy. And what is he doing as a job now? He's delivering pizza. You know, they deliver the pizza in America door to door. So he said, we're delivering the, he's delivering the pizza from the one car that he has left. That's it. So he said, how are you doing? He said, alhamdulillah, we are doing so fine. He said, we have roof over our head. We have food to eat. And he said, now by the grace of Allah, we have free time. So before we used to be too busy with the business, now we have time to go to the masjid and pray in jama'ah all the time. We have time to read Qur'an. We have time to spend with the family. He said, Alhamdulillah, we are perfect. No problem. Anybody else, especially if they are not a Muslim and they don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, immediately end your life. You have, oh my God, I lost all my money, my business, I have everything's ruined, all I've been working hard for my whole life, and it's all gone. No insurance, nothing. What can cover it now? You paid cash, you bought all of these ones. Gone. Gone. 
But the believer, when they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they know that this test that you face in this life, it's nothing compared to the next life. Nothing compared to the true test when you will face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And this is the problem with human beings when we start getting caught up with our own small problems. Our own small problems. Brother Nu'man Ali Khan, he brings the example for himself. He says, I was uh, living in Maryland and a flood came and went into the house. And in, in, in those uh, states, they have basements, which is a floor underground. He said, that floor is full of water. Now I said, Ya Allah, it's going to ruin and mold and it's going to cause problems for our health and water. And, and he was very distraught, feeling this is a big problem from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, big test. So he said, I called one brother from the masjid who is a handyman to come and help. So this brother is from Somalia. He said, so the brother came and he told me, yani, this is the big deal. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used water to destroy Fir'aun. Don't think you can stop water. <laughs> water is something that can destroy. But then he said the story about his life. When he was like four or five years old, his parents were assassinated in front of him. Then he traveled on the back of a donkey as a young boy to like another country and he went throughout Africa living on his own. He had to learn how to work from a young age. Then somehow he moved to the Gulf countries by the time he was 12 or 13. Then he was able to learn some other skills. Then he was able to come to America and his life continued on. But something, yani, unbelievable difficulties and tests. So the problem is sometimes we get caught up in our own life and we think that what we have is the biggest problem. And now if we just take a second and look, more than 29,000 children under the age of five have died in Somalia in the past days. And then we will be like, worried about our child that they didn't have a toy or that they didn't have some video game or we are worried about the food we are eating. No, this is not the best kind of dates. I didn't like it. Why? It's not warm. It's not very it's missing salt. I can't believe I don't want to eat this food. And, is that right? And the bombs are dropping on the Muslims in Libya and Syria and Yemen and all over the world. So we have to sometimes just step back from our small problems that we feel are the big problems and realize that they're nothing. 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 And in the big picture of the, the situation in this life that we are in, the real problem is that time will run out and all of us will be brought back to held accountable for how we withstood those tests. This is the real issue. You understand? So sometimes we will get caught up with these small problems. We forget the big picture. We forget that this whole thing, we are in a, in a, in a journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether we like it or not. To talk about Iman is endless, subhanAllah. We don't have enough time. The two-thirds of the Qur'an is talking about Iman. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here brought it, you know, uh, undefined. He didn't say, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَلِيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ He didn't mention all of the things. He just said those who believe. But 